so my next step is to try and get this crank out. So in order to do that, my instructions are to lift out this guy, the transmission main shaft first. That's all it says in the manual, take out the transmission main shaft first. So hopefully the chain will easily come off that way. Okay, well that guy's out and, and damaged now. But I think it was damaged to an extent earlier. Great, that's out. All right, lift this guy out. Now can I get this chain off? Holy crap, look at that. All right, so then this. I don't know that I want that off. All right, chain is off. That guy's out. Now we're down to the old crank. All right, crank is next. Let's see here. Still got that chain on there. All right, so when we last left off, we were very excited because we had figured out something. We had solved the mystery, we had gained some knowledge, and that's always exciting. So we were very happy about that, and we thought we had solved the mystery. But it was, it turns out that there is another mystery, and that is, and it, this mystery even has a secret code to it. You have to decipher a code on this mystery. So this is exciting too, but it has a bad ending, at least, I think at this point it does. So we got the crank out. We figured out that the crank, the number one rod bearing had failed and that it had spun, and the bearing had spun on the crank. The bearings had doubled over, welded themselves together, and that was the end of the engine rotating. Well, that may be the end of this engine. So let's take a look. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's our case. This is the right side of the case, and here's our crank over over here. What we figured out is basically that the crank, the crank is not in good shape. Let's look at the crank first. All right, so the rod journal for piston number one is right here. It's rather scratchy. You can even see on here there's a line going straight across the journal, probably where the two bearings jammed in on the journal and everything came to a screeching halt there's that there's also a bunch of wear scratches you can feel it's like it's almost feels threaded when i run my finger across like that so that is no good and not only that but when we when we mic it this guy has different measurements if i mic it here it's different if I mic it over here, meaning that it is, it's no longer round. It's an oblong shape. So that's not any good. And these are cranks that, according to Wing Ovations, the website that I was on, they're a company that sells and specializes in wing, uh, gold wings. According to them, these are, these cranks cannot be reground. And I'm not even sure how you regrind a rod journal. I don't know if that's possible or not. Let me know in the comments below, or I'll probably find out later at some point. Um, next time I'm at a machine shop, I'll ask. This crank is no good. It's basically what I'm getting at. Crank, no good. Now, when we go to get a new crank, that's when it starts to get interesting. It turns out these cranks from the factory were not like a standard, they weren't standard. There are codes marked on the crank and on, and on the case. Zoom back out here. So there are codes marked on both the crank and on the case that tell you right down here. Let's zoom in on that guy. So there's a marking on the case. This is the right side of the case. On the front, right behind the idler bearing here, there are three Roman numerals. The third one is hard to see in this frame, but it goes two, two, three there's three hashes on the last one these are your main journal cutouts on the case for the first second and third let's see if i can get around here a little bit yeah for the so for the first second and third cutouts on the case these are your sizes and now you can see that three the three hashes a little bit better so so we've got two two three that is supposed to be the size of these cutouts here so this guy 
this cutout here that the crank fits in that corresponds to the two on the number one on um, that we just looked at and then this guy is a also a two and that guy back there is supposed to be a three now these numbers mean about nothing at this point um, other than if i'm going to get a new crank i need to get a crank that came out of a case that was a two two three marking on the outside of it because then it will fit into this case that I've got here. And then if we go to the crank over here, the crank also has some markings on it and they're not easy to see because they're, they're written with like a little etching pencil at the factory at the time of assembly. The most obvious ones, the easiest ones to see are here on the, on the rods. And we'll get back to those in a second because we're not talking about the rods yet. So, but those are the easiest to see. You can see how they're etched in there by hand. The ones that are harder to see, they're supposed to be as far as the crank goes. Yeah, so, all right, so let's start at the front. So looking at this crank, starting from the front of the, of the engine, which is over here, there is supposed to be markings that tell you the size of each, each of these journals, okay, going down through here. All those journals have their own marking on here. So starting at the front, this is the number one journal for the case, for the crank. This is the one that goes into the case. This has a marking right here, and that is a two, right? On this one, it's a two, and it's really hard to see. I think you can see there, it says two. It's upside down in this frame, but two right there. That's supposed to be an indicator of the size of this guy here. Then if we move over here, we've now got this guy and there's supposed to be a marking right here. And that says, that's a B that goes, that corresponds to that one. The, uh, again, the B is upside down. And then over here, we've got two markings on this one. There's a B for this guy for the rod. And then there's another two for this guy, the crank, the actual, uh, the main bearing for the crank. You can see the pattern here. So the rod journals are marked with letters and the main journals are marked with numbers. On this particular crank, we've got, it goes like this. It goes two, this guy goes, this guy's a two, this guy's a B, this guy's a B, this guy's two, this guy's B, this guy's B, and this guy's two. And I don't know if that is a standard thing. I, this is the only gold wing crank I've ever seen. So I don't know if, it, if it's a standard to have them all sort of similar numbers and letters going all the way across the crank, or if it's possible to have a, you know, a B and a C on your rods, I don't know. But this, this particular crank, that's how it is, and that's how this system works. So we've got a two here, a B here for that guy. This up here says B and two, so, that says, so that's for this guy and this guy. Um, and then we've got over here another, another B for this guy, then here another B for this guy, and then here a two for this guy. What does that mean though? What does that mean for our engine and deciphering? What is, it, what is this deciphering exactly? What this means is that you then take these numbers that you've got off of your engine, and then there is a code book that's in the service manual, like the Honda service manual, and it's also on that Wing Ovations website, and I'll put the, I'm gonna put the link for that website in the description of this video. So with that guide, you can use these numbers and figure out what size bearings were used in this engine originally. And by size, I mean the thickness of the bearings. They had different thicknesses on different cranks in different engines. So on this one, I figured out that we've got, looking at the crank bearings, we've got a two on the case for number one over here. And then we've also got a two here. So then looking at the bearing selection guide, that means this bearing over here would originally been a brown bearing, as they call it. And that brown color references a specific thickness. The bearing is also supposed to be marked, colored, coded as well. This is my crank bearing number one in here that we took off the cap for it. And you can see very, barely a color, the brown mark right here, right there is a mark where they had marked it with like a brown ink or something, but this is a, the color coding on the actual bearing shell. 
All right, so at this point, uh, we're at a pivotal point again in this build where we have to make a decision about what to do with this engine. The engine has been a big hurdle for this build. What I know about Goldwing engines at this point, about how custom the cases and the cranks and the rods and the bearings all are. And also, I haven't mentioned this yet, uh, locating bearings for this engine, very difficult. Very, very hard to find bearings. The brown color are ones that are readily available, but whether or not brown would still work for this engine at this point in its life, it's a 70,000 mile engine. I don't know, I haven't measured everything yet, and I'm not going to measure everything on this crank because the crank is no good. It's unserviceable. You, you're not supposed to grind these cranks, and ours is totally torn up on that, that first rod journal, which, which leaves us with two options, basically. Option number one is to continue rebuilding this engine block that we have already. In order to do that, there's a lot of, there's a, a number of considerations. Um, we basically, we need a few things. We need, in order to rebuild this, we need a new crank. This crank is unusable. We need a new rod, number one rod. That, that rod is unusable. And by new, I mean, you can't buy a new, new one. You have to buy another used part off another bike. We'd have to find a crank that came out of a case that was marked 223 on it, so that, that crank would be equivalent to the crank we have in terms of the sizing of the journals on it. The crank would also have to have the same markings on it in terms of it would have to be, have the 2B markings um, all along the crank. The crank journals would all have to be two going down, down the line, and it would also have to have the B going all the way down the line so that I could use the same rods that I already have. And the new rod would also have to be marked 2D so it would be equivalent to the rod that I'm replacing. So I'd have to line all those things up and then I would have to get new bearings. In theory, I could use brown bearings if I can use the brown bearings. If I don't have significant wear on the other crank that I get that is still within new specs and I can use that guy, then that would be it would be feasible to use new bearings. And by that, I mean actual new bearings. Um, and I can get those in the brown color. The brown color is the only color that is actually obtainable, easily obtainable nowadays. All the other colors, there's browns and yellows and greens and blacks. Those are all very hard to find. I could obtain the brown colors fairly easily, but I would need that one set of black main journal bearings for that third third journal on the crank. And that could take months if or years to locate a black one because you have to just wait around for them to show up on eBay, wait till you can find a new old stock bearing. So that is, that's one prospect, that's one possibility that we could do that. Um, we could rebuild this thing in theory. The other possibility is to get another engine, another short block at least. I have the heads. The heads went out to the machine shop and came back. I spent $385 having the valves and the valve seats reground and the heads all worked over. So the heads are in great shape. They're in brand new shape right at this point. So all I need, I used a good used short block for this bike and then I could put this thing together. By, and by short block, something that doesn't have the heads on it already, that at this point in time, due to the complexity of how these engines are put together, it seems like the most reasonable route because a crank, all right, so let me lay it out for you. The crank on eBay, you can buy a used crank around $100, $120. $20, as cheap as $60. It's more reasonable, I think, to expect to spend $100, $120 on a crank. That seems to be more common um, price for them. And then another rod, that's 20 bucks for a rod. There's that, and then the bearings, the bearings themselves, the brown bearings, uh, they tend to run about $12 per half shell. That's $24 times three, that's $75 ish, and that's the crank. And then the rod bearings, uh, again, they're about the same price. They're about 10 or 12 bucks per half shell, let's say 10 bucks to do our math here. And so 20 times four, that's 80. So now we're up to 295. All right, so we're up to 295 rebuilding the engine. And that is with the assumption that the crank we get is going to be within a new specs tolerance and that we'll be able to use new brown bearings. Everything sort of hinges on our ability to find, to use new brown bearings because those are easily found. And even then, we still have the potential hitch that we will never be able to find the black bearings for the other part of the crank. We might be able to reuse the ones that we've got, worst case scenario, 
that might work. So that's option number one is to continue and rebuild this engine. Option number two over here is that we go and find another short block and then we just put our new heads on it and throw it in the bike and be done. So right now that is kind of where I'm leaning just in terms of time, uh, expense and more certainty. It really comes down to certainty because in both directions we're uncertain. If we get another used engine, we're uncertain of the longevity and durability of that used engine. The lower the mileage engine we can get, the better, of course. So there's that. The other option being to re rebuild this engine, there's just too much ifs on the rebuild. I think I'm gonna be pursuing a different used engine on this build. I, and I, that is disappointing. That is a, um, I hate not being able to use this, all this material. I do think it's a waste of, of good metal. The best we can do is try and part out and sell what we can sell on in terms of these parts so that maybe they can go into a different engine somewhere else, but that's about it. But this is a lesson learned. This is a lesson learned for all of us because when I first started pursuing the build of this bike, uh, I talked to a couple people that said, oh, I've never heard of anybody that's ever rebuilt one of those engines. Although they couldn't tell me why, nobody could tell me why nobody rebuilt these things. Now I know it's difficult. There's a lot of things that have to be lined up and the parts are not available. And so that makes rebuilding them very difficult, which is unfortunate because that means that these bikes are just gonna disappear at some point. You you won't see Hon, older Honda Gold Wings, period, because the engine once the engines go on them, they're done, they're done. So that's where we are today. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next episode. Oof.